Good morning and uh, welcome to the lecture, uh, lecture number 19 in thermodynamics. What we are doing in the last class? Any idea? What was the topic of discussion in the last class? Stephen's law. What was Stephen's law? Can we recollect? What was Stephen's law? Do we remember what was Stephen's law? No? Okay. Stevens law was like this. The MSF power of any body is equal to E sigma and its temperature. If I write that temperature as capital T in Kelvin raised to the power of 4. Do we remember this? Yes, sir. Now this E is the emissivity, this capital E is the emissive power. We do you remember this? This capital E is emissive power. Do we remember this? Yes, sir. What is emissive power of a body? What do you understand by emissive power? What is meant by emissive power of a body? Okay, this uh, small e, what is this small e? What is this small e? Emissivity. Yes? Emissivity. Okay, what is this sigma? Conductivity. Very good. Sigma is conductivity. And what is this capital T? Temperature. Okay. So in Stephen's law, the constant sigma is conductivity. Correct? Yes. Well done. <clears throat> well, uh, I must tell you that uh, constant sigma is not conductivity. It is uh, something known as Stephen's constant. So we had discussed that in the previous class. Sigma is Stevens constant. So this is the emissive power of any body at any given temperature. As you can see, please note it down. This, this emissive power depends on the emissivity. This emissivity depends on the type of material of the body. So it also depends on the characteristics of the body. So basically, we can say that this emissive power depends on what type of body we have. And this is directly proportional to temperature raised to the power of 4. That means if I make the temperature twice, the emissive power becomes 16 times. Do we understand this? This is what we know about the emissive power now. Emissive power, if you could recollect, is the energy, the radiant energy, thermal energy radiated by a body per unit area, per unit time. From here, I can find out, I can find out what? From here, I can find out the rate at which, I, have, I can find out rate at which thermal energy or heat energy is lost. We can call that rate as dq by dt, or you can write it as dqe by dt. Qe stands for the radiant energy or emitted energy. What is the rate at which energy is emitted by a body? If this is a body, it is at a 
given temperature, it is at some temperature. We have seen by previous theory of exchange that any body at any temperature more than zero Kelvin should be emitting thermal radiation. At what rate that thermal radiation is emitted, that is what we have to see. So what is the rate at which thermal emissions are emitted by a body? Can you now tell me from where I will find out the rate at which thermal energy or uh, radiations are emitted by the body? Can you find out from this? Can you tell me from here what will be the rate at which energy is emitted by anybody? Yes or no? Can you tell me what is the rate at which energy is emitted from here? So the rate at which energy is emitted will be simply this uh, emissive power, which is the rate or which is the energy per unit area per unit time if i just multiply it by the area i will get the rate at which this energy is emitted in other words the rate at which this thermal energy or radiant energy is emitted will be sig simply equal to e sigma a capital t raised to the power of four when i write capital t you remember you understand this is the absolute temperature that means temperature at temperature on the Kelvin scale. Do we understand this? This is the rate at which, this is the rate at which what? What? What is it what that we have found out? What is this? This is the rate at which? What? Thermal energy is emitted by a body. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This is the rate at which thermal energy is emitted by any body. And you can see on what all factors it depends on. Number one, it depends on emissivity. It depends on the type of body that we are dealing with. If it is copper, it is made up of copper. It will be different. If it is made up of silver, it will be different. If it is made up of any other alloy or any other metal or any other element, it would be different. Sigma is a constant, so this remains a constant. A means the area, the surface area of the body. That means the emissive power is proportional to the surface area. More the surface area. More is the emissive power, less the surface area, less will be the emissive power. So if I see, if I keep a cup of tea or coffee in, I mean, if I, if I, have, if I have tea or coffee in a cup, the surface area is very less. If I have the same tea or coffee in a big beaker, the surface area is more. You must have seen it practically that... Uh, Tea or coffee, it gets colder faster when it is in a beaker or it gets colder faster when it is in a cup? When I pour tea in a cup or when that tea was in the beaker in which I made that tea, where it will cool down faster? In the cup or in the beaker? Where does it cool down faster? May I have an answer? You don't know? Where, where does tea cool down faster? In a cup or in a beaker? Where? Why? Area is more. Because area is more, so it comes from simply physics. Now, this is the rate at which energy is emitted. I hope you have noted it down. Yes or no? Yes. Any doubts on this? No. 
Okay, if there is no doubt, then probably we can move on to a question where you can apply this and uh, see for yourself how you can uh, use this to solve problems. And again, the uh, such problems will come in your JE, whether you call about, whether you say JE mains or advanced, these are the problems, these are the sort of problems that you can expect in a JE ECA paper. And this is the first problem that comes right away right now. Problem number 37, I think uh, you have it, uh, the, you, uh, you have the notes with you. Do you have the notes with you, yes or no? Yes. The sheet is there with you, no? So you can check the problem from the sheet, problem number 37. And the problem is pretty damn simple. Two black metallic spheres. So when I say black, I might be referring it to as a black body. Radius is four meter. One is at temperature of 2000 Kelvin. And a one meter one is at a temperature of 4000 Kelvin. What is the ratio of the energy radiated? Such questions have come in AIEEE. AIEEE means JE means. It's as simple as that. Can I have an answer for this? Options are 1 is to 1, 4 is to 1, 1 is to 4. I'm afraid that is not the correct answer. How did you get 4 is to 1? Remember, uh, we are not playing Khan Banega Karodapati that you guess and you hope that your guess comes true. So please not guess. In physics, it's a dangerous habit to guess. Yes, anyone else? else? Or I should. Uh... Sir, wait, sir. So R square is directly proportional to T power 4. Na. What, beta? R square is directly proportional to T power 4. What na. is proportional? R square. R square, what is R? Radius. Okay, yeah. that is? Directly proportional to uh, T power 4. Radius is directly proportional to T to the power 4. Uh, this is the first time I'm hearing this. And I can't make sense of it. I'm sorry. Radius of a body is proportional to its temperature. I have not this body. If it is a spherical body, how is the radius proportional to temperature? I don't understand the logic, beta. Your logic is flawed. I can't say anything more. How can a radius of a body proportional to its temperature? I'm not talking about expansion or whatever here. Bodies are not going to expand. Don't know what you are thinking. Read the question again. And that is the problem with physics. In physics, you have to read the question and understand it. And then only you can solve it better. It's not mad that something is given and you just do it. Even without understanding the question, you might be able to solve it. Yes. I'll give you one more minute to think about it. It's the simplest question that can come. And what I understand is you probably have not read or seen the lecture before coming to the class. And that's a very dangerous sign in physics. I hope God will consider this when he, when you sit in the exam, you will be missing this time. Give you a minute to solve it. Shall I solve it? Or you want to try? Just now, I've just told you. One is to one. One is to one. Now the answer is correct. How did you get from four is to one to one is to one? Divided by four. Q1, no. is, Q, Q1 is equals to A1 into T power four. What is Q1? Don't read what is given in the solution. That's a very, very dangerous sign. That's the a, that's a worst thing that you can ever do. 
in physics is read the answer read the solution and then you think that you have understood it that is dangerous a very dangerous sign okay um yes you were about to tell me what is q1 what is q1 incident it is not written in the solution what is q1 okay so if we try to solve it how you do it this is the solution you already uh, have seen the solution probably now when you read the solution the solution may be in very short and it might be missing the entire uh, question all together right q now when they say q here they probably mean the energy that is radiated thermal radiation but if i look at the formula it also has a t small t this small t makes a hell lot of a difference because this small t stands for time the formula that we saw the rate at which body is losing heat was dq by dt so if i have to find out q the total amount of energy that it has emitted i have to multiply it by a small t do we understand this significance of small t just so no yes yes sigma is a constant so i can just take sigma out sigma is same for both the bodies time we'll assume here that the time is stay uh, same they might ask you the total energy emitted or they can ask you the rate at which the energy is emitted so in any case time just goes out so as i can as i can see the total energy emitted is proportional to area when i say area i mean the cross sectional area and the absolute temperature raised to the power 4 So I write the ratio. It is a one by a two multiplied by t one by t two raised to the power four. If I find the ratio of a one and a two, I will get r one square by r two square. When I put the values, I end up. I end up with what? I end up with the answer one is to one. Do we understand this? Any doubts on this one? No sir. Sure. Sure. Okay. Now, since we have understood this, now let us move on to the next thing that you must understand here. Go to the next thing. What I'll do, I'll take you back to the notes and uh, try to make some sense over here. Now we were here. where we were seeing the rate at which thermal energy is emitted by a body it is equal to sigma a into e into t raised to the power 4 now remember when we are talking about thermal radiation most of the question generally are based on earth a body is kept on earth and what happens obviously the question can be set in space as well doesn't matter now when i talk about earth that means on 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 earth we have a surrounding we have a surrounding and we have a surrounding temperature we call it ambient temperature or temperature outside or whatever right now it's summer time so temperature is rising up now if i take the example of this when i have an atmosphere when i have a surrounding the surrounding would be at a given temperature for example right now i think the temperature here is somewhere around 33 degrees 33 degrees in celsius i can convert it into kelvin i will get some value when this body let us say if i don't take it as my mobile phone i take it as uh, this chilled water of chilled bottle of water it is at a very less temperature now it is at a less temperature but it is still more than the more than 0 kelvin so this is going to emit thermal radiation right do we understand this Sir. but at the same time it is also going to receive radiations emitted by nearby bodies yes or no yes. okay now a simple question the outside temperature as i told you is around 32 to 33 degrees this is obviously at a very less temperature will it emit more or will it uh, will it absorb more 
does this body emit more or does it absorb more it is at a lesser temperature compared to the surrounding yes it it emits at the same time it receives is it emitting and receiving at the same rate or is there a difference between the two is the question clear to you bachcha the chill water ka bottle it is emitting at the same time it is also receiving is it emitting and receiving at the same rate or are the rates different do you understand the question yes or no yes, yes. you don't understand the question okay so when a body is emitting it is also receiving energy from nearby bodies if i to take the example of uh, earth it is also receiving energy from surrounding bodies now if i just take the example of earth if the surrounding temperature i call it as ts so what i'll write if the body is kept in a surrounding and i'm talking about earth of temperature ts t surrounding it is also receiving it is also receiving thermal radiations it is also receiving radiations now it is also receiving radiation it is also emitting radiation then at that point in that case what is the rate at which it is losing energy rate at which the body is losing energy losing thermal energy losing internal energy it is emitting it is receiving emitting receiving giving taking giving taking giving taking giving taking so at what rate it is losing energy can you tell me the formula for that uh, rate at which the body is losing energy now the rate at which body is losing energy let me write it as dq by dt the rate at which the body is losing energy will now be equal to e sigma a multiplied by t raised to the power 4 minus temperature of the surrounding both in kelvin raised to the power of 4 do we understand this yes or no yes sir so it is emitting energy it is also receiving energy if i subtract the two i will get the rate at which energy is lost remember this is also the rate at which energy is gained this is also the rate at which energy is gained so i can now classify it into three categories category number a or okay, case number a if t is greater than ts the body will be losing energy yes or no yes sir that means if the temperature of the body is more than the temperature of surrounding it will lose energy what will be case number b then case number b what will what will be case number b equal to then what will be case number b ts is greater than t if t is less than ts so the the that thing becomes negative or you can subtract ts4 minus t4 the body is gaining energy we understand this the body is gaining energy third case if t is equal to ts the body is neither gaining nor losing and the temperature and the internal energy of the body remains constant do we understand this yes or no yes sir 
Please note this down. We have arrived at a formula. We have arrived at a junction where I know the rate at which the body is gaining or the rate at which body is losing thermal energy. Please note it down. I'll give you a minute. Have you noted it down, Bacha? Yes, sir. So this is the rate, remember? This is the rate at which the body is losing or gaining thermal energy. Now, the question could be put in a different way. Instead of, see, not many of us are worried by the rate at which body is gaining or losing energy. We are more worried about rate at which temperature of the body is changing. So that could be your next setting. That is your next setting rate of change of temperature of the body. Rate of change of temperature of the body. When I say rate of temp change of temperature, if I write it as D capital T by DT, it might look a bit awkward. But remember, capital T stands for temperature in Kelvin and small t stands for time. Do we understand this? Why I'm not using a T and not theta? Because normally when we write theta, it might refer to degree Celsius. So that is why we are using capital T because capital T is also that uh, dimension for uh, for temperature and, uh, and, 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 and it refers to the Kelvin scale. Or if you don't want to write it as capital T by dt by dt, you can write it as d theta by dt. Which one will like? I think I will use d theta by dt. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Now, I know the rate at which the body is losing energy. Can anyone tell me what was the rate at which the body was losing energy? We just saw it. What is the rate at which the body was losing energy? dQ by dt. Do we remember it? Temperature is, temperature is greater than surrounding temperature. What was the formula that we got it? That we got? E. E okay. sigma okay. A T power 4 minus T. T to the power 4 minus T S to the power 4. Now, if I can write it as instead of capital T, I can use theta. It would look a bit awkward in writing theta, but that doesn't make uh, any difference. Uh, things uh, remain same. So I can write it like this E sigma A theta raised to the power 4 minus theta surrounding raised to the power 4. Do we understand? There is no difference. Just I use a different symbol. This is the rate at which the body is losing or gaining energy depending on T smaller than Ts or T greater than Ts. Now from here, from this thing dq by dt, can I find the value of, can I find the value of, can I find the value of what? Can I find the value of d theta by dt, the rate at which the body is cooling down or the rate at which the body is heating up or the rate at which the temperature of the body is changing. We can call it rate of cooling. We can call it rate of heating or you can call it rate of change of temperature. So this is first way you can call it 
rate of change of temperature. You can also call it rate of heating. If it is getting heated up, if the temperature is increasing, you can call it rate of heating. If the temperature is increasing, you can call it rate of heating. If the temperature is decreasing, you can call it rate of cooling. Do we understand this? Yes. I hope you are noting it down because uh, it is a very important uh, topic. Rate of heating or rate of cooling, you might have heard about rate of cooling. So, all the three things refer to the same quantity. From here, can I find the rate of heat of rate of heating or rate of cooling or rate of change of temperature? I'll give you a minute. Can you tell me from where and how will I find the rate of heat of cooling or rate of heat of uh, or or rate of heating or rate of change of temperature? From where I will get the value of d theta by dt. So what do I do? I divide this entire equation. So if I say the entire equation theta raised to the power 4 minus theta s raised to the power 4. I divide it by what? I divide it by m into c. Do we, uh, do we remember this? m into c. Do we remember this m into c? What does this m stand for? Mass of what? Mass of the earth, mass of the sun, mass of the moon, what? It is the mass of the body. Do we understand this? Yes. Then what does this, uh, this C stand for? Molar specific heat. Not molar because we have used mass. We have not used number of moles. So this is not molar specific heat. In fact, this is simply gram specific heat am i clear this is the gram specific heat of the body am i clear with this yes, sir. how did i get this so how did i get this how did i get this i know the if uh, delta q is the amount of heat which is required to raise that change uh, raise the temperature it is m c Delta theta, yes or no? Yes, yes. Or well, basically, if I write in small form, dq will be equal to mc d theta, yes or no? Yes, sir. So dq by dt becomes this divided by dt, yes or no? From here, I have found out, I have found out what? The rate of heating or the rate of cooling of a body and what do I see? It depends on how many things? It depends on number one, it depends on what? Tell me and this is where, from where the questions are going to come in this particular chapter. Don't get bamboozled by this. On what all factors does the rate of heating or the rate of cooling depends on? Tell me. It depends on what? It depends on E. What do I mean by E? It depends on the material of the body. Yes or no? Do you understand this? Yes, sir. It depends on, is directly proportional to the area of the body. More the area, more will be the rate of cooling or rate of heating. I just gave you an example. T gets colder faster in the beaker rather than in the cup because it is the rate of change of temperature or heating or cooling or for that matter rate of losing heat or rate of gaining heat is proportional to the temperature what else it is proportional to it depends on the difference or it depends on your temperature and the surrounding temperature the actual relation is theta raised to the power 4 minus theta s raised to the power 4. Remember, both have to be in Kelvin. So, when the T is very hot, it cools down faster. But when it comes near to the room temperature, the rate of cooling becomes drastically slow. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Hotter T will cool down faster, but colder T 
will not cool down that much faster. A very chilled bottle of water or cold drink will heat up very fast. But when it comes near the room temperature, it will heat up very slowly. Do you understand this? It is inversely proportional to the mass. More the mass, less is the heat of cooling. Now, less is the rate of cooling or heating. Bigger bodies, bigger mass will require more time. They will cool down or heat up slowly. Do we understand this? It is inversely yeah. proportional to the specific heat. More the specific heat, less, less the specific heat, more. Am I clear with this concept to everyone? Yes, sir. Can I have some raise hand that we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. This actually finishes the theory part for this. Now let us see where and how can we apply this. With a series of questions, I'll do whatever questions are possible. The rest would be given to you to practice and I hope you will do a good job of practicing such questions. So this comes the first one and this is question number 38. Two identical metal balls at temperature 200 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Celsius are kept in air at 27 degrees Celsius. So surrounding temperature is given as 27 degrees Celsius. What is the rate of or the ratio of net heat loss because they are going to lose heat because they are at higher temperature and surrounding is at a lower temperature. What is the ratio of net heat loss by this body? Since this question has come in CPMT, which is medical exam of CPMT and the level of JMA is similar. That is why the answer without even looking at this, you can give you the answer. But if it comes in JMA, obviously the option would not be like this. The option would be dif uh, different. Yes, so what is the answer? B. Yes, beta? B, B. Yes, uh, but more important than guessing the answer or, understand or, or, or telling me the answer, you have to understand how do you get it. How do you get it? They are not asking the rate of heating or rate of cooling. They are asking the ratio of net heat loss. I hope you have read it carefully. Yes or no? Because this small letter makes a hell lot of a difference. Rate of heat loss and rate of change of temperature are two different things because M and C, mass and specific heat, come in rate of heating or rate of cooling. Do we understand this? One is directly proportional. Okay. So, how did you get it? Everyone got the answer? One is directly proportional to heat power. I'm, I'm not able to hear, Bacha. What are you saying? A rate of cooling or heating or Q1. No, rate of heating is not Q1. Rate of cooling Q is not Q1. Proportional to T power 4 minus T, Ts power 4. The rate at which energy is lost, dQ by dt, that is what you say. Don't say wrongly, because if you say wrongly, these two terms are actually very different. Rate of cooling and rate of heat loss. M and C are different here. So if I change the mass of two bodies, the rate of heating would be, or the rate of heating or cooling would be different, but the rate of energy loss would be same. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So please don't make the mistake. So the rate at which uh, energy is gained or energy is lost is proportional to T raised to the power 4 minus T surrounding raised to the power 4. You just write the ratio and you get your answers. Do we understand this? Can I move further ahead? Yes, sir. With the next question. Now the next question goes like this. And I hope you will do justice to this. Remember, the more the number of questions you solve, the better you become and the quicker you become. The next one is this one. Now instead of the bodies, type of body, you have given a specific body, spherical bodies, spherical black bodies to be more uh, specific. Spherical black bodies of radius R1 and R2 are with surface temperature T1 and T2 
respectively radiate the same power for what is the ratio of R1 and R2. Remember, they are not, understand the difference. They are not asking you the rate at which energy is gained or energy is lost. They are asking you the rate at which energy is radiated. So you must read the question very, very carefully. I hope you are reading it carefully, yes or no? R1 by R2 is equals to Yes, but R1 by R2 is equals to T2 by T1 whole, whole square. Remember when you say T2 and T1, they must be in Kelvin. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Remember, it was only energy radiated, energy emitted, not energy lost or gained. So it is directly proportional to the absolute temperature raised to the power 4 and not T raised to the power 4 minus T raised to the power 4. Do we understand this? Yes. So this becomes a straightforward question. R1 by R2 ka ratio will come as T2 by T1, the whole square. Everyone understands this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now are we ready? 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 And I must tell you that most of the Students of that time made a mistake with this question, probably. Here comes IIT JEE. -E. Two metallic spheres, S1 and S2, are made up of the same material. Why are they given same material? What does the significance of same material? I leave it to you. And have identical surface finish. I leave it to you. What does that mean? I don't understand it. The mass of S1 is three times that of S2. Both the spheres are heated to the same high temperature and placed in the same room having the same lower temperature, but are thermally insulated from each other, so they do not exchange heat between each other. What is the ratio of initial rate of cooling of S1 to that of S2? The question passes on to you. I hope you will do justice to what we have learned remember what uh, the important terms have been underlined. Every term has its own significance, and that is why it has been underlined. And this is IITG. Yes, Bacha, anyone? One is to three. One by three raised to the power one by three. That looks promising. One is to root three. Root three is to one. All of them are looking promising. Anyone, any idea? That is how questions are framed in a JEE, -E, and that is why JEE -E becomes difficult. And I'm not talking about JEE -E main. I don't consider JEE -E main as an exam worthy of uh, deliberation. IIT GE 1995 was one of the toughest JE papers. One is to three. One is to three. I don't know that is the correct answer or not. I don't think that is the correct answer. I think the answer is the most difficult looking one. The most difficult looking one is one by three raised to the power one by three. Remember, if you can solve any question of JE without using your pen, you are extraordinarily brilliant or extraordinarily full. Because in both cases, you will get the right answer. Extraordinarily brilliant, you, you can calculate everything in your head and give me the answer. Extraordinarily full, that means you are playing Khan Manega Koropati. It's a jackpot. I'll give you a minute. To ponder because this is J.
Mass is also given, but and you have forgotten whatever I have taught you. Yet. It goes down the flush once again, my dear friends. And that I have marked important points, and you fail to read the question properly, my dear friends. And this is how you, the cookie crumbles. This is how you make mistakes in the examination hall and then you blame your faith. Got nothing to do with your faith. Just got everything to do with your understanding of the problem. Do you need more time or shall I do the rituals? Right. Trying? Yes, sir. Trials are good. I love trials. Even if you may not succeed, Edison failed 101 times, I think, when he was trying to manufacture or invent the electric bulb. But he did, he did, he did, he did succeed. Trials are important. And you must understand that whatever has been taught to you in the class, the question cannot come outside of that purview. It remains in that purview. That is why you must understand the terms correctly. And you must be able to use them. I got it, sir. Well done. So, may I know how did you get it? Mass. Yes, Bacha? Density is equal to mass by volume. Density. Density okay. is equal to mass by volume. Mass is equal to density into volume. Okay. Mass of, mass of S1 is three times of S2. So what difference does it make? M1, M1 equal to three, three times of M2. Okay. Hmm. What difference does it make? M1 is equal to four by, five, four by three pi r cube into a density. Right. Equal to 3 into 4 by 3 pi r cube. Right. From there, you can find out the ratio of their uh, radius. Yes or no? Yes. Now, once you know the ratio of their radius, just the problem that we had done before, you had find out the rate of cooling and the ratio of their radius. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That's it. And that is the fiber of solving the previous question that you can use the result in this question. Do we understand why we did that question first and this question now? Yes, sir. That is how... You build up your sequence and here comes the answer or the solution. As you can see, the rate of heating or rate of cooling, remember, there is still a difference between this question and the previous one. And again, you have been exceptionally lucky that you got the correct answer. The previous question that we did was rate of Rate at which energy was lost, not rate at which temperature was uh, changing. It was not rate of heat of cooling. It was rate of change, rate of rate at which energy is lost. Do we understand the difference? Rate at which energy is lost and rate at which temperature is changing. So rate at which temperature is changing is proportional to E. Now, for the two bodies, is the E same? Yes or no? Yes, sir. How did you get it from which? From which point in the question you got this? They are made up of same material same and material. same surface finish. It doesn't the same surface finish. Even if it is same material, beta, two metal balls of copper, they will not have same E. Because this might be very smooth and this might be very rough. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. That is the reference of smooth finish. Smooth finish and same material means E same. Do we understand this? Yes, this is how you understand from each and every question that you did. do. Okay, so E is all E is out, E is same. What about sigma? Sigma is a constant, sigma is same, yes or no? Sigma goes out. They are made up of the same material, so C is same, yes or no? Yes, sir. They are at the same temperature in the same surrounding, so this is same, yes or no? Yes. So rate of cooling or heating is proportional to the surface area 4 pi r square, yes or no? Yes. Divided by the mass, yes or no? Yes. 4 by 3 pi r cube multiplied by rho. Again, same material, therefore rho cancels out, yes or no? Yes, sir. 4 pi and 4 pi cancels out, yes or no? Yes. So the rate of cooling 
is proportional to R1. I mean, if I call it as rate of cooling or uh, rate of heating is proportional to, inversely proportional to the radius, that means R1 by R2 is proportional to R2 by R1. So we are getting the same answer. We're getting the same answer for the rate of cooling as we got for the rate at which energy was lost. Okay. Now I just have to calculate the ratio of the radius. How will I get the ratio of the radius? Mass of the first body is three times the mass of the second body. I just put it in the formula. I get the ratio of the radius. R2 by R1 is 1 by 3 h to the power 1 by 3. Yes or no? Yes, sir. From there, I will get the ratio of cooling or the ratio of heating. Do we understand this, everyone? Can I have some reason that we understand this? Yes, so remember, whenever you solve a question, you must be able to do it again when it comes in the examination all. And I'll wind up this class with the next question. And the rest of the question would be left for you as an exercise. Can I expect that you can do the exercise? If you can do the number of questions that are given in, it is much more than enough that can ever come in a JE. Can I expect that you will do this? The remaining question of the exercise, can I expect that you will do it as homework? Yes, sir. One more question from the JEE. -E. And again, as you can see, this is a favorite topic of JE. And why it is a favorite topic of JE? When I say JE, I mean JE advanced because students do not prepare for this because it looks difficult. A solid sphere is always solid. A solid coffer sphere density is rho, specific heat capacity, gram is specific heat is C, radius is R, initial temperature is 200 Kelvin, is suspended inside a chamber whose walls are almost 0 Kelvin and this 0 Kelvin question has come multiple times in a chain, multiple times in a chain. The time required in microseconds for the temperature of the sphere to drop 200 Kelvin is how much? The button passes on to you. Initial temperature is 200 Kelvin. Temperature of the chamber in which it is kept is almost zero. Why have they made it zero? Because that is how you can solve it. Otherwise, this becomes a very difficult problem because we will not be able to solve it. The maths becomes very complicated. To uncomplicate the mass, that is why zero Kelvin is given. Problem number 45 is what we are dealing with. And I sincerely hope that you solve this problem on your own because if you can solve this problem on your own, the entire topic that we have done till now in radiation will become clear to each and every one. Spot clear. Crystal clear. And remember, have you heard about something known as Newton's laws of cooling? Newton's law of cooling in radiation. Have you heard about this term? Have you heard about Newton's law of cooling, Bacha? Sir. Newton's law of cooling. Have you heard about it? No. No? Okay. That means you have not studied radiation at all. Anyways, doesn't matter. We are in this class and we are supposed to teach. We are supposed to learn from this class. I sincerely hope that you solve this question on your own. And therefore, I'm not solving it here today. I'll give you time to solve. If you're not able to do that, which I don't think it will happen, I will solve it in the next class. It gives you time because this is a good question. And I don't know why, but I hope that this question gets repeated in JE main or JE advanced, because I just feel that radiation is going to come in this, this year. I mean, radiation, not specifically radiation, maybe there will be a question of heat transfer in this year's JEE. When I say JEE, I mean JE advanced. I have this internal feeling. So that's why I'm spending so much time here. So on that note, I will uh, wind up today's class. I'll give you time to solve this. Solve this. The answer will already, is already there in your sheet. You can see it. But don't form your opinion by looking at the answer because then you don't get your own ideas. Solve it, try it, and that is the way to clear JE. On that note, I'll finish the class today, uh, today's class. I hope uh, you've enjoyed this. See you in the next class tomorrow. Tata.